All right, so we're about to board G-Force 1. So this is a modified Boeing 727. So you get 22 seconds of zero G. Let's check it out. As a fighter pilot, I'm used to extreme maneuvers. However, typically we don't experience zero G when flying. Most of the time we're trying to turn as tightly as possible, which means we're experiencing more gravity than normal. In a fighter aircraft, it's not uncommon to experience nine Gs, which is a crushing amount of weight that pushes us into our seats with over 2000 pounds of force. But today, we have an expert in everything zero G. I've invited Terry Virts to join me. He's a former NASA astronaut. He was the pilot of the space shuttle and then served as the commander of the International Space Station. Terry has spent over seven months in space and completed three spacewalks outside the station, which makes him one of the most experienced astronauts in the world. Terry and I have brought along several experiments and games that we're gonna play. Everything from a balloon filled with a thousand Orbeez that we're gonna pop, to a soccer ball that we're gonna juggle, to testing a strange phenomenon that was discovered by Soviet astronauts and kept secret for over a decade. Now, obviously we can't fly this 727 into orbit, so how does it work? The aircraft known as G-Force 1 does a series of aerobatic maneuvers called parabolas. It starts at 25,000 feet, about the height of Mount Everest, and then pulls up until it's 45 degrees nose high. That's steep, especially when you remember that this is a passenger aircraft. Next, the pilot pushes forward on the controls to create the zero gravity segment of the flight. At this point, everything in the aircraft is weightless. The plane then noses over and begins diving towards the ground. As the aircraft approaches its maximum speed limit, the pilots then pull back on the controls. This creates two times the force of gravity at the bottom of the parabola. This is almost equivalent to what you would weigh on Jupiter. In addition to zero gravity, we're also going to fly parabolas that replicate the gravity on the moon, which is one sixth of our weight on Earth. Push up really slowly. Wow. Whoa. Look into the camera here. Whoa. This is incredible. Oh my God. It feels like jumping off a diving board or some other high object. Your natural reaction is to kick and swim through the air, but you have to consciously fight that instinct. The same applies to moving. You can't twist your body well under zero G, so you have to hold on to something and turn yourself from there, pushing off in the direction you'd like to go. After a few moments of getting acclimated to our strange new environment, we got to work on our first experiment demonstrating a mysterious phenomenon that was observed by Soviet astronauts. The backstory is amazing and a little scary. I have a few scary stories of my own in my book, The Art of Clear Thinking. This book is a distillation of the lessons we learn as fighter pilots and how you can apply them to your everyday life. they are stories about combat missions in Afghanistan with danger close drops, flying over 1500 miles an hour and feeling the heat through the canopy, and why during an emergency, fighter pilots are taught to wind an analog clock before they act. Just for people who are watching this, if you pre-order the book, I'll send you a signed book plate that's flown supersonic. Fill out the form below, and after your order number, type the code 329. In 1985, Vladimir Genebekov launched on a mission to save their space station, Salyut 7. All systems on board had shut down and contact with it had been lost. Uninhabited, the space station had begun drifting out of control. Janibekov and a fellow cosmonaut were launched on a last ditch effort to rescue the spacecraft. Using their thrusters, they were able to manually match the tumbling space station and dock with it. After a week of repairs, they were able to save it, leading to what's been described as one of the most impressive feats of in-space repairs in history. However, it was during this repair that Janibekov noticed something strange. Some of the supplies that he brought with him were locked down with wing nuts. As he spun off the wing nuts, he noticed that they would rapidly flip 180 degrees to the opposite direction and continue spinning. This strange mystery caused alarm to the Soviets. They believed that since the Earth was a rotating body, it too at some point in the future could flip over during its orbit. The Janibekov spinning nut has caused surprise and concerns in the scientific community. Some scientists have even elaborated a hypothesis that our planet may perform a similar role one day. Janibekov effect was classified as secret, just in case. Thankfully, this hypothesis was disproved. Objects filled with liquids, like Earth, don't adhere to these properties, so there's no chance of that happening. We wanted to see if we could replicate what Janibekov observed. We found a plastic top that had a similar weight distribution to a wing nut. You can see that as it spins, it rapidly flips back and forth, just as predicted. 
Although the math to explain this is relatively complex, the reason it does this is because the top stability is walking on a knife's edge. Any force whatsoever, no matter how small, will cause it to tumble. Next we wanted to show some of the strange properties of water under zero G. Typically when you wring out a washcloth, the water falls to the ground. However, without gravity, the water squeezes out of the cloth, and then because of the surface tension, it actually runs along the surface of the cloth and onto your hands and just stays there, almost like a jelly. Don't worry about the random passenger drifting through the cabin. Next, Terry made a water ball. Without gravity to tug downward, the water assumes the shape with the least amount of surface tension, which is a sphere. Interestingly, any bubbles inside barely moved. Under normal gravity, the air bubbles, since they're lighter than air, would race upward and burst through the surface of the water. However, in zero gravity, the air bubbles are just as light as the water around it, so they just stay there. We actually have footage of Terry on board the ISS not only creating a water ball, but putting a Alka-Seltzer in it, which causes it to fill with air and expand. After a quick snack break, we then juggle the soccer ball under lunar gravity. Then, once we were back in zero G, we had a shootout competition. Next, we wanted to see what would happen if we popped a water balloon under zero gravity. Because it's been done plenty of times in space, we wanted to mix it up and see what would happen if we first put a thousand Orbeez inside. The plan was to pop it and then catch as much of it as possible in a bag before we're back under gravity. We have a water balloon filled with water beads. This ah. didn't go as expected. Because water beads grow to over 100 times their size when wet, the pressure inside caused them to explode into a constellation of Orbeez floating throughout the cabin. We made a mess, but it turned out to be a big hit. This was a fun experience. I want to thank Terry for joining me as well as Zero G for having us on. Now that it's open to the public, anyone can fly on board. They fly out of New York, Miami, Houston, Long Beach, Oakland, and Seattle. You can go on their website, GoZeroG.com, and save 5% on any zero gravity flights by using the code ADASTRA. I'll see you next time. If you like this video, you'll like this one where I'm flying in the world's first civilian F-16. See you next time. 31,000, track north. Aces one. Aces one and two, execute.